A Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was everyone's childhood. When I loaded up the definitive edition, I genuinely thought I had accidentally loaded up the original game and not the remaster. I'm dead serious, in the first cutscene I was like, oh whoops my bad, but no, this is the definitive edition. Not only is this a lazy release, but far worse, Rockstar also sued modders who made significantly better remasters such as this. Why not hire these talented modders instead of taking legal action against them? I don't usually care about gaming drama, and I much prefer just to post for fun on my channel, but attacking fans is where I have to say something. Rockstar is making me get all serious because they're being the dodgiest of dodgy malakas. Now I do love San Andreas, so I'm going to make one of my normal videos, but Rockstar do better than my dad did. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Welcome back to Los Santos, but now with better lighting and giant palm trees absolutely everywhere. CJ arrives back at Grove Street and proceeds to do a fully sick bunny hop into his house like a king. We've been away from home for years, but times have changed. The ballers who wear purple have taken over most of the city, and our gang Grove Street families is on the ropes. This becomes immediately apparent as we, four grown men, flee our mother's funeral on push bikes. The ballers killed her last week, but I get some timely revenge by knocking one of them over so he scrapes his knee. Now now we're even. The boys aren't happy that I've been away, but CJ decides he's going to stay and help the gang. They call me a buster straight buster, so you know it's bad. We'll be living at the old Johnson family house. CJ might be a straight buster, but his mum was straight busting. Okay, that was bad, but thanks to this remaster, we can finally see Mrs. Johnson's mummy milkers. Maybe it is worth $60. My brother calls and explains that our gang is irrelevant now and says I'll need to prove that I'm still hard. I proceed to get a haircut as there's nothing more gangster than a positive self-image. Now though, it's time to strike fear into our enemy's hearts via graffiti. I also use the spray can to murder a hooker and now because I've done this in a game, I feel like going out and doing it in real life. Wow, video games really are inspirational. Most of our gang members are addicts, and so we decide to go and take down all of the local dealers. We roll up on one crack den, and I've got to say it's actually really nice. Sure, you'll have to wash some blood out of the carpet, but there's comfortable lounges, hybrid spring mattresses, and it looks like someone cooked homemade pizza. If you ignore the person ODing on the floor, this house really is a home. My brother Sweet notices my efforts, and we share a wholesome moment. It's good to see the Grove Street boys out and about again, chest bumping, and enjoying sobriety. All this murder makes the gang hungry, and so we head down to the drive-thru to enjoy one of the most iconic scenes in the game. Except this time the game is using the Unreal Engine, which means the windscreen reflections block out the characters, making it difficult to see anything. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. The bowlers hit us while we're eating. I can forgive being attacked at my mother's funeral, but attacking during lunch is completely unacceptable. It's become clear that we must show the bowlers that Grove Street families are back with ever so slightly improved graphics and plenty of nostalgia. I take a quick break from gang life to engage in some recreational beach activities. While attempting a fun Christian prank, my game glitches out due to a phone call from my brother Sweet. The sole reason for his call was to tell me that I'm out of shape and I need to hit the gym. Drugs aren't destroying our gang, body shaming is. I attempt to kill Big Smoke to save everybody some time, but his plot armor is thicker than CJ's mum. I then get a second phone call from Sweet, and this time he's telling me to start repping green colors. While on the phone, I'm getting chased by a police officer for no reason. God, this game is immersive. I steal the officer's bike and head down to Binko Clothing. I decide to go for a Latin gang-inspired look, which makes no sense, but it's the only way you can wear socks and sandals without being teased. I then proceed to beat up every single person in the store and take their money, as you can't get arrested in here. It's kind of unethical because it's mostly just elderly people, but at least I'm not suing my own fans. I head across town to get the last piece of clothing I need. This should also help boost my reputation, as nothing makes you look less like a narc than riding around on a police motorbike in incredibly obvious gang colours. I purchase a fabulous leopard hat, I mean some grey three-quarter shorts, and now we're finally ready. You see, I have a little dream that I want to make come true. I want to buy a house on Santa Maria Beach, but the problem is it's $30,000. It's actually quite hard to make money in the early game, but I have a strategy. I'm going to do what CJ was always destined to do. I'm going to drive taxis. It's not the most glamorous work, but at least it gives us a closer look at the most realistic rain effects I've ever seen. Deep into my shift, I pick up this factory worker in the blue shirt. En route, I spot some ballers and figure my client will understand that I'm balls deep in a ferocious gang war. I run a few of them down and then get out with my bat and I kid you not, my client sides with my sworn enemies. I even put air conditioning on for this guy and this is the thanks I get. 
And taxi driving is clearly a far too dangerous profession for CJ, but at least we're $2,351 closer to our dream home. The boys are keen to clap back and hit the ballers in the middle of the day. Drive-bys are a low risk and effective way of doing a huge amount of damage in a short amount of time. You're gone before the enemy can even make sense of what's happened, which is why Ryder was so pissed off that I kept getting out of the car to loot. Man doesn't understand how hard it is to save for a home deposit on a taxi driver salary. We'll have to put the beach house dream on hold for a moment as my sister is dating a Mexican gangster and my brother Sweet isn't sure about it. Wow. He gives me a low rider so I can blend in with the Mexicans and keep an eye on Kendall. They want to have a hydraulic competition and I bet a thousand dollars on myself. A Christian lady then hops into my car and I proceed to bounce around. I win easily but will now have to spend my afternoon disinfecting my passenger seat. I meet Kendall's boyfriend Caesar, who is my favourite side character and everyone is happy families. I however still need about $24,000 for my idyllic beach getaway, I mean for guns, narcotics and Big Smoke's takeaway orders. My new best friend forever Caesar tells me about a lowrider street race which should be easy money. I steal a lowrider but it turns out it's owned by one of my homies. In a panic I recruit him and he agrees to join me. I guess he's into abusive relationships. The race begins and I immediately run over the track official who waved us to start, which I hear is good luck. Me and my homie win easily thanks to 2004 AI and pocket a cool $1000 for our efforts. On my way home, I hit one of the smoothest trick shots of my GTA career. A late 360 tail splatter on some bowlers. Now this gang war has two things in common with Call of Duty lobbies. People are hitting clean clips and constantly saying the n-word. I guess all the body shaming finally caught up with me and I decide to hit the gym. My homie unfortunately can't come inside, so I just go in there and throw some weights around with textbook perfect form. When I leave, my homie is gone. He left his car and just peaced out. We won races and shot bowlers together. When I was young and one of my gang members would die or go missing, I'd get sad and I always thought I'd grow out of it. I guess not. I handle the loss healthily by repetitively stomping this lad's face with my socks and sandals. I still need cash, loads more cash, so I head over to Riders to see what ideas he has. Surprisingly, he does actually have a good idea. We're going to rob houses. Nothing like a few home invasions to bolster the bank balance. It's quite sketchy going into people's bedrooms while they're asleep. I find it's better to already be hiding and waiting in the bedroom before people get home. This also gives you an opportunity to sniff their clothes, I mean secure valuables. I get paid in respect, not money, but I can now rob houses on my own. I begin hitting every house I can find, taking TVs, consoles, and honestly judging people's lifestyles. This kitchen is disgusting, just like the Bloods and Crips rap about. Always do the dishes before bed so that when you wake up, you can propel yourself into a productive day with a clean mind. There's even dishes in the bedroom. I 360 crush two people with my car, and yet this is still the most disgusting thing I've seen all day. Home invasions are okay, but we're just not making cash fast enough. I decide to see if Ryder has any other great money making schemes. I walk into his house and he's cooking up a batch of PCP, wow. I feel like we had that great moment where we killed all the dealers and now Grove Street families are trying to be clean. I guess Ryder forgot about that, probably because of the PCP. This does however remind me that there are still dealers out there who usually have a lot of cash on them. They typically hang out in the baller controlled neighborhood so it's a high risk, high reward money making scheme. I get to work gunning down as many of the big girls as I can find. Bullets fly in every direction as bowlers retaliate but sure enough my bank balance keeps going up. I decide I need some protection so I recruit a few Grove Street members. I can't imagine they'd be thrilled to know they're risking their lives so I can afford a seaside holiday house. After a while our car gets too smashed up and so I steal another one. This happens to be owned by the Vargas gang and a huge shootout entails. There isn't a gang war handbook, but if there was, I'm sure avoiding starting a second gang war would be high up there. Eventually Skinny is gunned down and shortly afterwards so is Fatty. The streets bleed green, but so does my bank balance as we now sit on $20,000 and are a step closer to financial independence. I notice a store that says everything is 69 cents. Now as we all know, 69 is a funny number, so obviously I enter the store in a pretty good mood because of the funny number. So there I am, browsing the produce, and suddenly I see that a Sprunk can is $1. I'm sorry, but this is misleading and deceptive conduct. Sonny Evans would be mortified. I proceed to execute the owner and get back on that grind. Still $10,000 short, I have one last trick up my sleeve. People say Australians don't have much culture, but there's one thing we're far better than the rest of the world at. Casual gambling. Of course by casual I mean betting your entire week's paycheck on a sport you know nothing about so that your kids go hungry, but the point is we do it patriotically. 
I place $10,000 on Chunky Halt, the blue horse, and he toys with my emotions for a while before pulling ahead and winning gold. Now stacked, I head down to Santa Maria and purchase myself a slice of paradise. Fatty and Skinny would be proud knowing they sacrificed their lives so that CJ can wake up, step out of his house, and cross the road to grab a nice frappe while he watches the sun rise over the ocean. Grove Street families for life. Of course I had to make at least one video on the definitive edition, but I've actually already done a complete 10 video playthrough of San Andreas. There's a playlist on my channel. I was thinking over the next few months of doing playthroughs of Vice City and GTA 3. Also, I want to do a Far Cry 2 video and maybe like a Christmas special or something. Let me know in the comments, I like knowing what you're enjoying or want to watch. It sucks the definitive edition has caused so much drama, but these games are still golden. Take care, and I love you.